but the best engagement today we're having so much fun uh we got folks from all over the globe tabitha they're everywhere which is so Amazing. cool we've got people with kittens we've got people with single cats multi cats we've got it all but um one of our favorite topics is senior cats and that's you know they just are near and dear to us and um we just have a lot of considerations for them that i think people get a little unsure about and and heck i think some people don't even know what is a senior cat by definition right so you are here to talk about that so um you know, you're going to help us know the things that we need to do, but overall, I want to just introduce before she kicks off all of those amazing um, aspects of um, our our senior kitty life. Um, Miss Tabitha Kisera is a registered veterinary technician. She's up in, are you still in Ohio? Yes. In Ohio. <laughs> she is also a veterinary behavior, your behavior, your application I just took my boards. I don't have the results yet. So okay, I'm okay, okay. staying close, girl. <laughs> okay, okay. I was like, I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to say it out loud. So she is in the grading process. Y'all send all the good energy, the good vibes, the positive, okay. because we know she's going to pass and become a veterinary technician specialist in behavior. She works as a consultant. She owns a consulting firm called Chirps and Chatter, where she helps folks um, who are having behavioral issues with their cats and dogs, um, if needed. Um, you guys know, um, if you work with me as cat coach Becky, if you have serious behavior issues, she is who I'm sending you to for the real stuff. So we're going to talk the real <laughs> stuff today with Miss Tabitha Kisera. I'm getting out of here. You guys enjoy. Thanks. All right, I am just getting my slides. There's not too many because I know we don't have much time, but I want to get those up. Be my friend, slideshow. So I figured we'd start today with just a, a small poll on what do you think is the age at which a cat can be considered a senior? So I just launched that. I'll give you guys just a few minutes, like probably a minute. So we can get started talking about senior cats. You guys are fast. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. Well, to be fair, I have the slide up that says stuff. I just realized that. <laughs> I put the answer. And it looks like the majority of you are saying over seven. Well, there's quite a few of you in here. This warms my heart. Senior cats do not get enough love, you guys. And there are definitely some special considerations for senior cats, just like there are for kittens or adolescents. Age does matter because we see changes and being aware of those changes and how to keep our animals comfortable is huge. So I will end the poll. It looks like the majority of you said over seven, which is definitely the case. So I like to start with, Age is not a disease because many cats do begin to encounter age-related physical changes between seven and 10 years. So there's a lot of different views out there, but according to me and the Association of, of, of American Feline Practitioners, we consider a cat a senior at seven. And the reason why is because at the age of seven is when we start noting those age-related changes that can happen. Like your cat may be slowing down, your cat more, more is more predisposed to arthritis, to hyperthyroidism, to kidney issues. Your cat may have some issues with their vision and seeing light and things like that. So just like what happens to us when we're getting older. Um, my knees don't work as great as they used to. I can't drink as much as I used to. Um, and I'm still in the middle. I'm not a senior yet. Yay. Um, so it's really important to take these things into consideration because seniors, we want our cats to live longer and they are nowadays, which is awesome due to veterinary care and amazing caregivers like yourselves. But it's really important to remember that age is not a disease. And that's something I'm a very strong proponent of because what I often hear is my cat's too old to have a dental like these are the things I hear because I'm a behavior consultant and a vet tech 
and I work in rescue. So I'll hear things like, oh, my cat doesn't move as much or doesn't play and that's normal. Guys, that's not normal. Age is not a disease. When I'm 75, you guys, I'm still gonna be rocking it. My play might look a little different, but I'm still gonna be jamming. <laughs> I'm still going to be going to shows. I might not be going to mosh pits anymore and watching, but I'm still doing those behaviors. So that's the biggest thing I want you to take from this. Age is not a disease, but there are changes that happen to our cats as they age. And cats are individuals. We all know it. All of us with cats know that our cats are individuals and they experience, experience aging in their own unique ways. So I have, of course, all of my cats are seniors. Um, I have five cats and they're all seniors. And the one needs dental dentals under anesthesia every two years, while the other one, her genetics are a little bit better because genetics play a huge part in dental health, as well as I brush my cat's teeth and I do what I can to prevent dental disease. But each of one of my cats are over the age of seven, but they need different care. So it's just important to realize age is not a disease. If your 12 year old cat doesn't play anymore, that's not normal. That something's off. Your cat may be in pain. Um, or if you notice your cats, like I always ask clients, where's your cat's favorite resting spots? Cause you guys know, cause you know your cats. And then once I start asking the client, they're like, wait, she hasn't been on the top of the cat tree now that you mention it for like a year. And then we start realizing the cat isn't in their favorite resting spots. So of course, us being able to recognize and reduce factors is a huge part, which is what I'm going to talk a little bit about, how you can keep your cats comfortable. But of course, a big part of cat senior cat care is having them see the veterinarian ideally twice a year because they are more predisposed to having issues, just like us as we age. I used to go to the doctor like once every four years when I was in my 20s. Don't recommend that. Go every year. Um, but as I age, I'm only 36 now and I go to the doctor probably every six months. So this is the same thing for our senior cats. It's really important to have a relationship with your vet because as a vet tech, I meet a lot of cats for the first time and they're really, really ill because by the time the client recognized those signs, since cats commonly hide signs of, of pain and they aren't noticeable, by the time your cat's not eating or withdrawn. So what I mean by withdrawn, like your cat hangs out in a closet most of the day or my cats greet me when I walk in. If my cats didn't greet me when I walked in, that's a behavior change. I'm like, whoa, what happened? And we're going to the vet. I'm probably a little overly cautious uh, because of my career. But still, if I'm noticing behavioral changes, you're going to notice those a lot quicker than you notice medical changes, like not eating or drinking more water. And that's why those vet visits every six months is ideal with blood work and blood pressure. Because if I know what your cat's normal looks like as a veterinarian and a veterinary technician, when your cat's stuff is abnormal, I can help your cat better. Versus I only see your cat every five years when they're super sick. Like for example, one of my cats has a low white blood cell count and it's normal for her. We've done a lot of diagnostics. I'm just simplifying it. But if another vet didn't know that and saw that in my cat's history, they would probably work her up or have certain different differentials on her thinking what she has versus I told the vet, this is normal. I have her history. Here's her blood work for every six months. Um, so we really keep track of those things. And then we can catch things like, cause kidney, kidneys do ha have issues as they age, but the sooner we catch things, the longer we can prevent it or manage it and keep our cats living long for happy and healthy for a longer period of time. So the biggest thing with kitties, which I'm sure you guys have already picked up on this, but keep a regular routine. Consistency and predictability is everything. Now this is important to be honest for cats and dogs and humans, because our schedules have gotten a little, a little changed due to this pandemic thing we're dealing with. And a lot of us have had a lot of trouble saying, okay, I'm not getting up and going to work. I'm getting up, if you work from home, like I do now, <laughs> I'm getting up and I'm going into my office. That's different and that's weird. For a cat, changes like mom's feeding me 10 minutes later or we're moving or we're getting another cat. When you get older as a human and as a cat, changes are harder to accept and adapt to. So even if, like I hear a lot of people say like, she loves cats, but we just got a kitten and my cat's 10, but she's always loved cats. And this is the way it's been. And I'm like, whoa, 
that's like my husband when I'm 60 being like, I have this child that's going to come live with us. That's a big change and it can be really hard to take. So when it comes to changes that you're aware of with your cat schedules, like if you are moving, there's a lot of things you could do to prep your cat prior to that. If you are going to get another cat, ideally you're going to do a correct introduction and do that really slow at a pace, eat both the cat, the new cat and the senior cat is comfortable with, which can be three weeks, but it can also be five to six months. So it's really important to recognize how important a regular routine is. Like I feed my cats at this time, they get their olfactory, which is set enrichment at this time. I take them outside for a walk if I walk my cats um, or they go get patio time between this time every day. So it's not to the second, but for example, I play with my cats every night before I go to bed, which is between one and 3 a.m. Yes, I'm a night owl. Um, and that's something consistent for my cats. So it's predictable, it's consistent and having that, when you know what's going to happen in the day and have an idea, things feel a lot safer. So if you are making changes, because we do move, we do have children, things happen, just be aware that you need to help to prepare your cat for that. And there's a lot of different ways you can do that. Instead of just being like, hey, I just moved or I just had a baby, my cat's 13 and he's peeing outside the box, what's going on? Understand from your cat's perspective, his world got kind of flipped upside down. Or if you have a few senior cats and one cat passes away, a lot of us commonly are like, we should get him another friend. And that's actually in most to all cases, the worst thing to do because your cats, now your cat's dealing with the loss of a friend. And then they're dealing with you because of course you're going to be distraught as well. So we want to keep those the cat's things around and the scent around as long as we can. So that again, we're transitioning that cat to deal with that loss in their own way. Bringing in a new cat would kind of be like, if my best friend passed away, which will never happen. And then someone was like, here's this new best friend. I am gonna get very upset. <laughs> um, so this is the same thing for our kitty. So it's just really important to remember, keep a regular routine, consistency and predictability is everything. It sounds corny, but this will make your cat's life so much better. And when you're making changes, be aware if you are like, I moved or my work schedule changed, which a lot of ours are right now, um, because some of us went to being at home all the time or not being at home all the time like myself. And now I'm home all the time, even though that's a good change, it's still different and weird. So I increased the enrichment with my cats and they already have quite a lot. But when I started being home all the time, I increased the enrichment and I increased, I increased some of my schedule. Like we're gonna do two play times because I knew mom's home all the time. And I was probably being a little more stressed due to you know the world right now. So I tried to account for that. So one of the things that you can do right away, and all of you can do this without going to the vet, is senior fi your home. We always talk like with my grandmother before she passed away, she was living her best life in her home. And we added some bars and things so she's less likely to slip. We seniorfied the house for my grandma. And just like kittens need different care, we can seniorfy the house for your kit, your cats and your dogs for that matter. So there's a lot of really simple things you can do that just makes your cat's life easier. When it comes to going to the bathroom, eating, drinking, playing, just daily functions, I really want that to be easy for your cat. And I'll be honest, a lot of homes I go into just doing those basic daily functions, there's a lot of stress that is oriented with that. Like the senior cat has to walk down a flight of stairs to go to the bathroom. And most cats over the age of seven have arthritis or degenerative joint disease, which is the same thing, um, in at least one or more joints. So asking your, your, your senior cat to go up and down a flight of stairs just to do a daily function, that is rough. That's like asking my 90 year old grandma go up and down the stairs every time you have to pee. It's not the greatest. So there's a lot of things that we can do to just make our cat's lives more comfortable. So here's just a few options. Routine, which we already touched on. Heated cat beds are life. Um, many of you probably already have heated cat beds for your cats, but cats run warm. They like hot things just like me. Um, so heated cat beds can be a really easy thing to add to your house. 
and your cats can have comfortable resting areas. Cause a lot of cats, even if they have some mild arthritis or not any arthritis, they actually prefer heated spots. Like your cats probably like to sit near the heater or on your heated blanket. So I have heated cat beds throughout my house um, and I have five cats. So I have more than five heated cat beds because those are a high value resource. And I don't wanna make my cats have to fight over this amazing thing and they all really like it. But that's a really easy thing you can do. And then of course you wanna provide resting areas that aren't heated as well. So you should be providing a variety of resting areas and a resting area can be your bed. A resting area can be an Amazon box with a blanket in it. You know, I'm sure your cats have lots of favorite resting areas, but it's important to have specific cat resting areas, like a bed and a couch. Yes, my cats like to rest there, but those aren't specific for my cat. And then also carpets, rugs, and yoga mats. I use these so much. Um, my whole home has carpeting, but if you have wood floors, something that you can do is place carpets, rugs, or even yoga mats to allow more traction for your cats. This is also helpful for your dogs because as they age, we see a lot of the splaying with the dogs or the cats and they can't structure themselves. And I can't imagine how uncomfortable that is. So for example, all my under all my litter boxes, I have yoga mats because you can match them to your house. You can have fun colors. Uh, they work great as litter mats and they're a nice substrate for the cat because I can put my claws in here. I can shake my claws off. It's comfortable, which is why I use yoga mats for litter mats, but I also use yoga mats at the vet and for lots of things. So again, just to give them that structure so they're not sliding all over the place. And even if you're not seeing your cat doing this, it they feel that way, especially with the arthritis that we tend to see. Private places is really important. So I already kind of touched on how it's important to provide cat specific resources, because I love my cat clients who have their cat rooms. I think it's awesome, but resources should be everywhere. So I always ask clients, where do you hang out the most? And then they tell me usually bedroom and living room, but everyone's different, which is why I ask that specific individual. And then I'm like, how many cat resources do we have in this area? Because there better be some. And if there aren't, we're going to talk about it because our cats are bonded to us just like our dogs are. And they want to be where we are. So if I have a cat room, which is awesome, I'm not saying that that's bad, but all their stuff is in there. They want to hang out with me, man. So I have cat, like this is my office and I'm sure you could see that cat scratcher with the cat stairs. Um, and I have a variety of other cat resources in my office because I'm here a lot. I spend a lot of time in my office and I have five cats and a dog and a human husband. So I have dog beds throughout my office. I have a variety of things so they don't have to compete and they could enjoy spending time with me. So it's really important to provide private places for your cats. Like if you have one cat, you should ideally have a cat, like a cat tree in your main living room. So again, we shouldn't be having all our resources in the basement, which I tend to see a lot, or just in a cat room. These resources should be everywhere, but especially where you are. And if you don't, like, let's say you don't want your cat sleeping with you in bed, which is total, I understand that. Mine sleep with me, but respect. I'm going to give them a perch on my window with a heated cat bed because they prefer that over my bed. So I make sure to provide a specific place for them. Vertical and horizontal scratching surfaces. So a lot of senior cats, you may not see them do this beautiful long stretch and scratch because ideally you have a variety of scratchers for your kitties because you know, I have 40 different types of cups um, to drink out of. So I like to have three to five different substrates for my cats to scratch. And you guys probably know what you, your cats like, but I think it's important to have horizontal scratchers too. Because for some senior cats, if you don't notice your cats doing this big stretch as much, they're probably having some arthritic pain, which is really common. Or sometimes I'll see a cat, they used to do this and now they scratch like this. So they still stretch a little bit, but again, that's a sign that a lot of people commonly miss that their cat's having some pain. So it's important to provide a horizontal scratching surface too, because those senior cats want to scratch and their nails are growing like crazy. And that way it's a little more accessible to them. We're just making it easier for them to use. And then of course we want to be gradual and making changes. So if you're, we're going to talk about litter boxes a little bit on the next slide, but if you're adding in litter boxes, or cat stairs, like, so basically 
wherever their favorite places are, like if your cat's favorite place is your bed, have some cat stairs there or a box with a yoga mat. It doesn't have to be cat stairs and place some treats on it to kind of acclimate your cat to it. Don't place them on it, have them choose to go on it. And you'll notice that your cat will take those smaller steps to get to that bed or get to their cat treat. Or you might notice they're in their favorite places again. Um, a lot of my clients, when they set up a ramp or a series of steps that their cats can easily get up on, they're like, she's in her favorite place again. She always loved that place. She couldn't get to it anymore. And again, it could be a box with a yoga mat. It could be stairs. Um, I'm also a big fan of providing elevated feeders and waters. So you see this example of my Siamese cat eating from this elevated bowl. And it just doesn't, it kind of avoids her having to do this kind of motion because a lot of cats have some pain here. And I want to just make, if I can make it easier, why not, right? So elevating their water and food. And again, it could be an elevated bowl like this pre-bought, or it can be just, I'm going to place their bowl on a box. And I've noticed a lot of cats, especially senior cats, when clients started to elevate their water, they noticed their cats drinking more. Their cats, it hurt for them to drink. So it's important to provide a lot of different options. Um, I'm also a big fan of night lights in the basement or dark hallways. So as your cats age, their eyesight weakens a bit, just like us, even though cats are awesome little prey and predator animals. So I will place night lights near their resources. So if you do have a litter box in the basement, because in a perfect world, you have one on every floor, I'm going to have a night light there to have my cat be able to easily access that. But when it comes to making changes, we want to do that slowly. If you're adding, that's great. If you're adding, that's not so bad. But if we're taking things away or moving things, like if you're like, I want this litter box in the other side of the room, I'm going to move it two inches one day, two inches one day, two inches like two days later, and then to the place I want versus I'm just going to lift it and go to the other side of the room. Because the cat might be okay with that, but the cat might not be. So when it comes to making changes, even positive changes, it's important to make those changes gradually. Litter boxes, my favorite thing. Um, so when it comes to seniorifying the house, a big part of that is seniorifying their bathroom. I mean, they have to go to the bathroom every single day, uh, multiple times per day. So one of the things that I recommend is I don't use litter boxes sold in pet stores. I don't recommend them for most of my clients. And there's a lot of reasons why. The biggest reason is, I'm not sure who's making them. It's not people who know cats, because they're too small. Um, the cats can't physically turn around. So I always joke with my clients that the bathrooms sold in pet stores for cats are basically airplane bathrooms. So you're making your cat use smaller than a porta potty every single day. <laughs> um, so what I prefer are Sterilite containers, which are way cheaper. They're like five bucks. Um, and then I like to cut a low entrance exit and entrance because most cats who have arthritis, they get it in their coxofemoral joint, which is right at their rear, so their tush. And it's what they use to walk and kind of posture to defecate. So as you can imagine, if a cat's just doing a daily function of peeing or pooping and they have to jump and then they have to walk through something, again, I want the bathroom to be easy. It should not be hard for them. So since cats mostly have arthritis in that joint, if they walk like this, they could just walk happily into that litter box. And it decreases a lot of the pooping outside the box. Like if your cat's pooping right outside the box, usually that's pain. It could also be constipation and other issues, which you should definitely address with your vet. But a lot of the time they just can't get to the box. Um, so ideally you should use low entrance litter boxes. You should place the boxes in easily accessible areas. So we kind of already touched on that, but it's really important for the resources to be in the areas you guys are. So I have five cats and I know one of the golden rules is one box per cat plus one. So I have seven boxes throughout my house. I have three floors. So everyone's home's different. Um, and again, I have a litter box in my office. It's a Sterilite container. So it's like the one at the bottom, which is a like under the bed container where you store your sweaters. You just recycle the lid put some litter on there and it's an easy jump. Um, but I have all of these are boxes in my home. So I have options that's still a small jump or again with this gray one and the yoga mat, they could just easily walk in. They can physically turn around. They can 
cover their urine and feces and if they stand up to urinate because what I've noticed in a lot of senior cats it hurts to posture so they just pee like this like against your so they might just pee they might have their feet in the litter but they pee right outside the box they're being good kitties they it hurts to do this so with these sterilite containers not only are they an appropriately sized for your cat but that way if they do pee like that because they, that might just be a habit of theirs, or they may have some pain with the posturing. It goes to the plastic and it goes down. Nothing in your on your carpet or on your wall, which is awesome. Um, we want to place them where your cat spend most of their time. So, especially if you have like a super senior, which is I would say fourteen and older. Yay, super seniors! Or if you have a cat with kidney issues or diabetes or some medical issue that causes them to urinate and defecate more often. I'm going to have like, I'm, if my cat has urgency and it's due to a medical issue, like let's say your cat has IBD or something like that. Not only I'm going to have litter boxes on every floor, but I'm going to have them. I'm going to be like, where's my cat love to hang out? There's a box easily accessible in that area because my cat is a wonderful cat, but they have urgency and they're older. So I want to make this easier for them, which is why in the hospital room, your bathroom is right there. <laughs> because we want them to be easily accessible. And this is true for our kitty friends too. Use a litter with a fine consistency that's easy on paws. I don't recommend changing your cat's litter if they like it. That's a whole nother conversation. But when I go to someone's house, I pick up the litter and I hold it with my hands um, because a lot of, most cats pr prefer unscented, soft, substrated litter, not pellets or crystals or all these other weird things that they're coming out with. Those are really hard on their paws. So most cats prefer litters like this, like unscented, scoopable, granule litter, or in this one box, there's the world's best, which is still a soft litter, but not as scoopable. But again, it's all about what your cats like. It's just, I tend to like to avoid pellets, yesterday's news, crystals, things like that, because that's really uncomfortable on their pauses. Is. Now, as far as grooming, as our cats age, they, I'm sure you guys have noticed, it's a little harder for them to groom themselves. And cats are meticulously clean creatures. Guys, they're cleaner than us. They hate being dirty, um, which is why it's really important to scoop the boxes once to twice a day, um, which is another reason why we should have multiple boxes because I have five cats and I scoop my boxes twice a day, but my cats love the ones in my living room the most, of course, because that's where I am the most. And even though I scoop that twice a day, if all five of my cats go in those litter boxes, if I have boxes in other areas so they can go to use those that no one's touched, so there's lots of reasons why that one per cat plus one rule exists, but that's one of them because cats are very clean. And to ask a cat to step over their own feces and urine, y'all, we ask in a lot of them, which is another reason why the appropriate size boxes are good because then they could just go to this side of the box or this side of the box versus the store-bought litter boxes where they pee or poop. It's basically, they can't really come around or your cat might even have to actually step out of the box to scoop and cover their poop, which is a natural behavior. And then my clients are like, there's litter all over. I'm like, your cat's awesome. The fact that he has to step out to finish the bathroom, like, let's talk about that. Um, so when it comes to grooming, your old cat is probably less likely to groom efficiently. So you may have to wipe away some discharge around their ears, nose, or anus using separate pieces of like wool or cotton, and you would warm them with warm water and just kind of wipe that off. Your cats may need a little hygienic shave. So if you have a long hair kitty, you're a veterinarian or you're fear free, ideally uh, cat groomer, or you, if you're comfortable with that, can give your cat a little bikini wax back there. And that's just gonna help them be cleaner and feel cleaner so you don't have to wipe as often. Cause a lot of long hair cats, even if they're not older, sometimes there's so much hair back there, things get stuck. Um, and that's really uncomfortable for our kitty friends. So it's really important to, for your senior cats, and the reason why they don't groom as much is most commonly due to arthritis. So they're, cause we most commonly see it in that coxofemoral joint and the back joints and it hurts to stretch back there. So brushing your cats, especially as seniors, is really helpful because they may not be able to keep themselves as clean as they'd like. 
So daily brushing or cuddle sessions, regular nail trimming, ideally, we really want to keep it positive. So this is a picture of a cat. Her name's Tabitha, actually. Um, great name. Um, and I worked with the client. She's only one, but I worked with the client because she's a long haired kitty for the cat to enjoy brushing. So we did some training sessions so the cat would have a positive association with brushing. And you can do this too. So I think starting this sooner than later is best. You want to be gentle with your senior cats because again, like I don't think people realize how much arthritis senior kitties have. And if like, let's say you're cutting their nails and you're just picking up her paw, that might be a lot for her joint. So we really want to be gentle. We don't want to, I know that we probably all know this, but we don't want to like scruff and hold them down if they're fighting because they have a lot of pain. And if your cat is actively trying to get away, that means we push too far and we are creating a negative association. So for example, these kitties live with you. So could you get a licky mat, which is just a thing that you put some yummy food on um, and give it to them and brush them twice and then stop on a good note and have them finish eating? Yes, because you live with them. You could cut just one nail a day and keep it positive. And what I mean by keep it positive is have it paired with something the cat likes. It could be churro. It could be temptations. You guys know what your cat's like. It could be a play session. Um, it could be a cuddle session, but we're going to pair it with, hey, one or two brushes or one nail. And we're going to stop before the cat gets stressed. Because a lot of people are like, my cat hates being, hates their nails trims or my cat hates being brushed. But unfortunately, that cat's history is being held down um, and showing a lot of signs of stress and, and being really pushed over thresholds when we could have just started this off positively. So again, these kitties live with you so you can take it slow even if they've had past trauma and we can keep it positive. So I'm a big fan of the Furminator because you don't have to brush them as much. So you could just, if your cat isn't a fan of brushing because it takes quite a lot of fur out so you don't need to brush them continuously that can be great. You're going to be like, I'm going to brush you once today and give you a treat. We're done. Or I'm going to brush you. If you're, if they're still chilling with you, hanging out with you, you could brush them again, give them a treat. And then like three or four brushes, you've got a lot of hair out with a Furminator. The Zoom Groom is a wonderful tool. I'm not sure why cats love it, but I use it a lot, even to socialize fearful kittens. Um, but that's something that's a little less abrasive than the, the Furminator that could be a good starting point. Like, hey, I'm just gonna brush you with this and then we're gonna work up to the Furminator. So again, it's all about helping your cats with the, the grooming, being kind, being gentle and not, and if your cat gets really, really upset and hates nail trims and you're like, I have to have the vet tech do it, let your vet know that, hey, maybe you should reach out to a certified cat behavior consultant like myself and work on making nail trims less stressful. Because if it's hard for you to do, understandably, I understand why you want to take them to the vet. But if the cat gets horribly stressed and it's just for a nail trim, we can work on that. You can work on that at home with the help of a trainer, a certified trainer, of course. So there's options. Don't feel helpless. Always ask. I ask for help all the time. It's a team effort. And then last but not least, I know I'm going over quite a lot in a short period of time, um, is enrichment for your senior cat. I know it's, I've been saying it over and over again, but I, guys, it hurts my heart. I see people with their cats and they're awesome cat caregivers, but they say things like, it's normal that my cat doesn't play. And it just makes my heart break because it's not, um, it's not, that's weird. That's not normal. That's like, again, just, it's not normal. But again, that enrichment might look a little different. Like I used to be able to drink and then wake up and go to work at 6 a.m. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> so, cause I'm aging, I'm still awesome. I'm just changing up. So now I have two drinks with a lot of water cause I've learned. Um, so with our cats, it's the same way. So here are just a few examples. I mean, we could go crazy with enrichment for your senior cat. And I actually have a handout on my website for free that goes over a lot of this stuff even more in detail, which I'll make available after this slide. But some ideas for enrichment for your senior cats are catnip kickers. So I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with those, but those are those large pillow type toys that 
are filled with catnip, silver vine, or something yummy, good for the kitties, and they might have feathers or something on them to make them more appealing. I'm a big fan of catnip kickers for all cats, but for senior cats, like my one cat, she has some neurological issues and she's a senior, bless her soul. So she loves catnip kickers because she's just laying there and she's playing and kicking. And it's very easy for her to interact with that toy. She can grab the whole thing. So even, even though her pain is managed because she's on medications and we do the loop and lots of other fun things, but that toy is an easy toy for her to play with that she really enjoys. Horizontal scratchers, we kind of already touched on carrier bags and paper bags without the handles. So again, you guys all have paper bags. You take the handles off, toss a fake mouse in there, put some catnip in there. They're just exploring. You all know, like when I order from Amazon, that box sticks around for a few days and then I toss it or re recycle it. Then I recycle it. Recycling is key. Um, and then when I order from Amazon again, we switch it up because novelty is important. We don't want to change. If your cat has a favorite toy, you don't want to take that away but changing it up is really important. So a, a way to do that is we call it toy rotation and they do this with children's toys. Hilariously, I don't have children and I did not know they did this with kids' toys. I only knew about it with cats and I'm like, that's genius. Why, why wouldn't it apply to humans, duh. Um, but basically toy rotation is a really easy way to make toys novel and fun because again, I get a new iPhone every time the new iPhone comes out and your cats, I go to so many homes where there's a basket of toys and that's great, but guys, it's the same basket of toys and it's been sitting there for five years and that gets boring. So toy rotation is a great way to keep things exciting. So you can grab your cat's toys around the house, whether it's like a ball or a pillow or a mouse and marinate it in silver vine, valor root, catnip, something like that, or even if you don't marinate it, that's cool too. And then you're going to take the toys that were in that, that bag or that jar and give them to your cat. So they're like brand new toys from your cat's perspective. So I do that once every two to three weeks where I just grab a few toys. My cat does have, one of my cats has a baby. So if your cat has a toy that they are really bonded with and carry around, that's not a toy to take away, but all their other toys. And that way you're just keeping things fresh olfactory enrichment again another great thing for senior cats even if they have a lot of arthritis and they're 20 olfactory enrichment is all about smell and scent is the main way cats communicate and i think we forget about scent enrichment with cats we talk about it with dogs but guys for cats it's great and there's really simple things you can do you could just place a small amount of scent in a sock or a paper ball a box, a bag, again, catnip, silver vine, valor root, honeysuckle. There's a lot, of, catnip's great, but there's a lot more than that. Um, cat grasses, so like this is a, a photo of my cat Chip. I just, I can't plant it, unfortunately. I do not have a great thumb. So I just buy <laughs> cat grass quite a lot of the time and I refresh it. Um, and my cat enjoys just chewing on grass or I'm just gonna find this toy or I'm gonna find this smell in this bag, like once every two weeks, I have Mao Joanna, which is, they have kind of um, collections of different scents, which is what I like about them. So for example, one time it'll be catnip, silver vine, ballerine root, and then another will have three different scents. So it keeps it different. And I just take that and I spread it throughout my house in like 10 places. I just do that like every two weeks, just for my cat. Again, they might not run to it, most of them do, but it's just something fun for them to explore. I'm a big fan of bringing the outside in. So again, if your cat is harness trained or you have a catio, those are definitely things that we can do by taking them outside. But of course, windows that are open is bringing the outside in. Or I, what I do is I know what's in my backyard. So obviously we wanna make sure it's a safe and non-toxic for your kitties, but most of us know what plants are in our backyard. And I will go and get sticks and things and bring them in for them to just smell and check out. Again, it's just bringing the outside in. It's a new smell. I went to a beach once and I was familiar with that beach. So I brought some sand home and I put it in a box and my cats played in it for an hour. And then they were like, that was cool. But they just got to have a new experience. We were providing them with something different and new and allowing them to explore, which as our cats age, they need those options. Just like as I age, I 
I can't just stay in my house. I need to go places and do things and meet people. That's what makes us what we are. And our cats really need those opportunities to explore too, whether they're 30 or five years old. <laughs> um, so snuffle mats are another great option. Snuffle mats are something that you probably commonly see with dogs. So it's basically a mat with like fleece and snuffle means to nose into. So for cat snuffle mats, usually they're a little smaller and I cut the fleece a little shorter, but they just have to find, they just have to find the treats or their kibble, um, whatever that they prefer. Like this is an example of a, I think she was 18 years old and this was the cat's first puzzle toy ever. Let's see if this video will play for me, be my friend. Oh, that's my other video. So that's a video of a box. Um, it's my cat's favorite toy. And of course it's the cheapest. It's a box with tissue paper and I hide kibble in there. That's providing tactile enrichment because they're hearing auditory enrichment because they're hearing the crinkling, they're touching the paper and then food enrichment because they're sniffing and looking. So that's a great cheap toy. And then yes, this beautiful cat, she's a super senior and her mom's like, she'll never play with a toy. And she was living her best life. She's moving a lot slower. Like this is a super senior kitty. And what I started with was a really easy puzzle toy. So the really easy puzzle toy in this context, cause you may not be able to see it, is just the bottom of an Easter egg. So really simple to start to set the cat up for success because I knew she was a super senior. It was my first time meeting her. And anytime you're introducing, cause you can see all these puzzle toys right here, I have quite a few, but when it comes to introducing your cat to puzzle toys, no matter what their age is, you wanna start with something easy, like a toilet paper roll with both ends open or the bottom of an Easter egg, and then work up to more challenging toys based on your cat's ability. Sometimes clients will be like, my cat hates puzzle toys, but they, they started with a really challenging one. So they kind of set their cat up for failure. Um, just like if I, if you gave me something and I couldn't do it, I don't want to learn with you anymore. <laughs> um, so you want to set your cats up for success. And again, another thing you could do is just hide treats in your cat's favorite resting spots. That's usually how I start my clients to feed puzzle toys. I don't even have them add the toy yet. I just have them place the, I ask them where their cats like to hang out the most. And I'm like, just get five to seven treats, depending on how many cats you have. Um, and place them in their favorite resting spot. So the cats are just like, ooh, I got a treat at the place I was at, this was easy. And then it, sometimes the cat will find it immediately. And then I'm like, okay, if your cat was like following you and found it immediately, then we're gonna add an Easter egg or a really easy puzzle toy. Then if your cat still does well with that, we're gonna make it a little more challenging and start to hide them. So again, you're working at the pace of the cat. Some other options, Again, tossing treats, like with my senior neurologic cat, she, we found her outside and she wasn't in a great state. Um, so she really didn't know how to play, um, which I commonly see. So I started with just tossing her food at feeding time, like close with the door closed um, away from the other kitties. So she could feel safe because she was new to my home. And now she's the best with puzzle toys. She tries to get my dogs puzzle toys, but we started with that. Everything good, Becky? Oh, love, you're muted. Everything's great. We are just running ourselves actually out of time and over a little bit. So I had to- Oh no, this is my in. last slide. I am done in like two minutes. I plan on finishing at five. But I love Becky for making sure I could stay on track because you guys, I get really excited about cats. <laughs> and we will just, we'll get to the Q&A. We'll have to skip the Q&A, guys. Sorry about that. So last but not least, clicker training is another really cool thing that you could do with your senior cat. And it's really important when it comes to enrichment, find what your cats like and enjoy. It's really important. So your cat might love this while your other cat loves this. They might have they might, your cat might be eating out of puzzle toys while your other cat's still on that. I'm finding the, the treats. And then last but not least, this is my email address and my website, as well as my Facebook and Instagram. 
And I have a lot of great resources and I even have a prepare and prevent senior package that kind of works with you to help senior fire your house and find enrichment for your senior cat because we love our senior cats. And I'm so sorry that we didn't have time for questions. I know all the lectures went over a bit today, um, but I was just so excited to talk about senior cats and I will be joining you guys with my Q&A here in a minute and don't hesitate to email me with any questions and I will do my best to help.